The problem with the freelance market today is that everyone is calling themselves a freelancer, which makes it difficult for clients to identify the real experts. That was a quote by Paul Jarvis, a freelance designer and author. These past few years, we have seen a rise in the popularity of freelancing as a viable option to make a living or just as a side hustle, after it was a thing only a few people knew about. Naturally, the popularity of freelancing has led to a saturation in the market, now more than ever, getting a foothold in the market and a standing that provides a reliable income is difficult if not impossible in the eyes of some people, especially with the influx of cheap labor from third world countries, which created a very enticing demand and supply dynamic between companies in the West and cheap labor in markets with lower currency rates. Today we're gonna take a deep dive to understand how this phenomenon began and how it came to be. For many of us, everyone in a position of authority around us would say something along these lines. You won't get far with art as a job. Luckily, this has actively shifted with the boom in the media and entertainment industries. For example, animation, movies, video games, comics, anime, you name it. People want entertainment and we are actively seeking more content to consume compared to the past. And boy, does the entertainment industry deliver. These days, you just log into your Netflix, Disney Plus, or Amazon Prime to get access to hundreds of movies and TV shows at your fingertips. Or you just grab your Xbox or PlayStation controller to get access to the most breathtaking video games of our time. And all of these were created by hundreds of thousands of talented artists and video game developers. In the US alone, the industry accounts for 6.9% of the total United States GDP, employs 1.4 million people in 2022, and has a market size of $717 billion. With these big numbers, you can only imagine the doors this opened for artists and creatives of all kinds. This also opened a number of new creative positions, creating new jobs. Graphic designers are needed for movie posters, social media content, in addition to other stuff. And 3D artists are also needed for video games, movies and TV shows, and CGI is more and more required and highly in demand in live action productions, especially the fantasy and sci-fi types of genres, think anything from Star Wars to Game of Thrones. Concept artists and illustrators are a must to visualize their concepts before committing to a project. Manga and anime on their own are thriving, and for that you need illustrators. Let's also not forget about animation and the plethora of animators it employs for the different processes involved in animation from narrative, voiceover, to line work creation and coloring. We can go on and on about how the entertainment industry provides creatives all around the world with the ability to work and get paid fair wages in most cases. But a parallel option rose in popularity and this is none other than the freelancing option. When it comes to creativity, freelancing gives broad options. You can take gigs from companies and work with them on short-term projects without being a full-time employee or work for clients who just need some small projects. One of the biggest problems with any type of freelance work in creative industries like video game development, VFX or animation is that it is often inconsistent, especially for those who don't have experience under their belt. The rise of the gig economy has led to a saturation of the freelance market, making it harder than ever to stand out and find consistent work, said Katie Dale, design director at Lyft. With all of this, naturally the market starts to saturate. Everyone wants a piece of the cake and who can blame them? Some of these signs of this saturation are the surge of freelance websites like Upwork, Freelancer and Fiverr and the huge amount of offers there are for just small gigs. For example, Upwork has over 12 million registered users, I mean freelancers, and 5 million registered clients as of 2021. The platform reports that employers on Upwork spend a combined $2.52 billion yearly. So if we do some math, here we can see that $2.5 billion is divided over 12 million users, we can see on average that every freelancer is gonna get a little bit over $210 per year. And even if we assume that 80% are not active, it is still gonna be around a thousand bucks per year on average. This means one thing in my book, which is that most freelancers are making very little money 
while those with experience are getting the lion's share of the revenue. And these might be very, very few. Also, according to freelancing websites such as Upwork, among millions of clients, there are what Upwork calls core clients. These are basically employers with all-time platform spending of at least $5,000, including some activity within the last 12 months. By 2020, Upwork had 145,000 core clients, and the interesting thing is that they represent about 80% of its gross revenue, and they represent only 20% of the total clients, which is really interesting. From 2015 to 2020, the number of these core clients that make most of the money has tripled, which is a good sign that the freelancing market is thriving, but on the other hand, supply is responding to that demand accordingly, maybe it is even greater. But one big issue that plagues the freelancing world is how people can lowball themselves just to get a gig or two. And we can see this among beginners. Studios and companies will for sure take advantage of that because lowering the cost of production as much as possible to make as much profit as possible can be one of the main goals behind that. And this is a great opportunity to do so. COVID saturated the market even further. When your regular employees are working from home and being very productive anyway, wouldn't it be better to seek cheaper talent in third world countries because you wouldn't have to cover their insurance or provide them with any benefits anyway, and they would be happy to accept the offer too. This could potentially lead to sinking employment rates in the first world countries, all in favor of reducing cost and increasing revenue. We can see this clearly in creative industries such as VFX, where VFX houses in the Western world outsource their most repetitive and tedious tasks to countries such as India and the Philippines, creating a perfect balance and a win-win situation for both. So the studios get the job done on time, for maybe tenth of the cost with a great quality, and people in these countries get to work on a regular basis. The same thing applies in game development, because, for example, studios often need to create complex environments that have thousands of game-ready assets, so they resort to using cheap labor from the same places I just mentioned, and everyone is gonna be happy, except freelancers working in the West, who eventually get screwed. No pun intended. We must also talk about the recession and how that affects freelancers. Whether or not we are truly in a recession remains to be determined by the professionals, but it would be remiss for us not to take it into consideration. Recession being a drop in employment, leading to a drop in consumer spending and thus a drop in production, which possibly could be a good thing for freelancers. Sarah Bright writes in an article for the publicist, a freelancing job is often more appealing during a time of recession. A recession may just open opportunities for freelancers, and businesses may be more likely to hire freelancers as well. Whether this will help desaturate the market for sure remains to be seen. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below because we want to hear what you guys think. You can also take a look at some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.